Tonight on the MTN News, a Chinese spy balloon hovers over the magic city. I was really crawling out of my skin yesterday, which prompted me to look north. And there's this thing just hanging up there. All air traffic grounded as the Department of Defense and President Joe Biden consider shooting it down. Plus a snowplow Samaritan. I was blowing the snow off the road and come up on these people that were stuck and looked to me like they were stuck. How this man may have saved several lives when gunshots rang out along a rural Montana road. Your MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Reesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. Tonight, the Pentagon confirms a strange object spotted in the sky over Billings yesterday was indeed a Chinese spy balloon. That balloon had apparently been hovering over the northern U.S. for the past several days, and it had a lot of people here wondering what in the world it could possibly be. Okay, that thing is not the moon. The moon is right there. This thing is so weird. I swear to you, that thing just that thing just morphed into two circles. Did you catch it? No. I was out here watching it. I'm not kidding you. I, I believe it. We're told that President Joe Biden has been briefed on the situation. Well, tonight our David J has more on what the Pentagon is saying about why the balloon may be flying over Montana. It was not known that what was in the air was a Chinese spy balloon over Billings Logan International Airport. The Department of Defense says that this has happened before in the country. It's tracking that balloon, and at this time, it's not a physical or military threat. That thing just morphed into two circles. It's a sight that had people talking all across southern Montana. A Chinese spy balloon clearly visible from the streets of Billings. Okay, that thing is not the moon. The moon is right there. But we're now learning this strange sight in the sky has been on the government's radar for days. At a Pentagon briefing Thursday, a senior defense official said, we have been tracking it for some time, saying it entered the continental U.S. airspace a couple of days ago. When asked whether the balloon was trying to collect intelligence on Montana's missile silos, a senior defense official said, clearly the intent of this balloon is for surveillance, and so the current flight path does carry it over a number of sensitive sites. We know exactly where this balloon is, exactly what it is passing over. The Department of Defense does not believe the surveillance led to any taking of sensitive information and says other instances of the activity like this have been observed in previous years. But that does little to assure many here in Montana. This is a perfect example of why we need Senate Bill 203. This really shows that there are nations out there that want to spy on us. Miles City State Senator Ken Bogner is sponsoring legislation aimed at keeping adversarial nations from acquiring land and critical infrastructure in Montana. A bill he says he was motivated to sponsor because of land recently purchased by a Chinese company just 15 miles from the Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota. The ag production land hits the issues of food security. We help feed the entire nation. And the critical infrastructure is things like oil refineries, telecommunication facilities. As for the balloon, the Department of Defense says it did consider shooting it down, but a senior official said it was large enough to cause damage from the debris field if we downed it over an area. We just couldn't buy down the risk enough to feel comfortable recommending shooting it down. That leaves some Montanans wondering if and when it will return. In Billings, David J, MTN News. Montana Governor Greg Gianforte says he was briefed yesterday on the incident. Gianforte said in a statement, quote, from the spy balloon to the Chinese Communist Party spying on Americans through TikTok to CCP-linked companies buying American farmland, I'm deeply troubled by the constant stream of alarming developments for our national security. Before the news broke, speculation was running rampant about that object and the reason for yesterday's ground stop at the Billings Airport. Our Haley Monaco takes a look at a wild 24 hours with an even wilder conclusion. It's a conspiracy theorist dream, an unidentified flying object spotted over Billings Wednesday. Residents have offered up many hypotheses as to what it could be, but none would believe the truth. The Pentagon has been tracking a Chinese balloon flying over the northern U.S. A senior defense official told media on a conference call they've been tracking the surveillance balloon for several days and considered shooting it out of the sky, which is the reason for Wednesday's ground stop at the Billings Airport. Saying, quote, you did see reports yesterday of a ground stop and the mobilization of a number of assets, including F-22s, in the event that a decision was made to bring this down while it was over Montana. 
So we wanted to make sure we were coordinating with civil authorities to empty out the airspace around that potential area. Officials eventually decided against shooting it down, citing possible debris concerns. Ground stops are not common. New Billings Airport Director Jeff Roach was out of town when he got the news of the stop, which affected airports between Billings and Helena. Three total planes were delayed in the two-hour window from 1.30 to 3.30. The unknown object had some residents worried. I was really crawling out of my skin yesterday. And others guessing what it could be. Weather balloon was a common choice. To have pictures, video, footage of some kind and we can easily uh, debunk any of those claims if they come up. So we showed Brad Mickelson of the National Weather Service the video. Okay, it's a little white dot in the sky. In conclusion, there's there's nothing to say um, that we would know what it is, but we know for sure that it's not from the National Weather Service. Well, not from this country's at least. National reports say that the balloon is well above commercial airspace and does not present a threat. Although it might be tough to convince everyone of that. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. A good Samaritan jumping into action to help protect two people fleeing a terrible crime scene along a rural dirt road near the Crow Indian Reservation. Now, we first told you about this shooting on Monday. According to sheriff's deputies, 32-year-old Carl Eldon drove four people to a remote area along Cormier Road where he got into an argument with a 14-year-old in the car. He ultimately pulled out a gun and shot her along with another 18 year old passenger. He was charged in court today with two counts of attempted deliberate homicide, assault with a weapon and one count of attempted rape. Two others in the car took off running, fearing that they would be shot. Our Charlie Club spoke with the man who came to their rescue in a story you'll only see on Q2. That shooting happened on Cormier Road, 14 miles south of Billings. As you can see, there's not a whole lot going on out here. Houses are few and far between, but we're now learning more about how the suspected shooter ended up here. Sean French has been plowing rural county roads like this for 25 years, often in the middle of nowhere, but he's never witnessed anything like he did Monday evening. They were two of them running towards me and, and I knew something was wrong. I knew it wasn't right. Two strangers pleaded for help claiming their lives were in danger. They were just saying that there was a guy shooting these girls and stuff like that. So I just picked them up and proceeded to call 911. Sheriff's deputies arrived and encountered an 18-year-old woman who had escaped to a bystander's car. The victim had blood on her hands and stated she was shot by the defendant and her 14-year-old niece was still in the Dodge Durango with him. Officers then found the two people hiding inside the cab of French's road grader. According to court documents, both were hysterical and kept repeating he was going to shoot us, and both believed the 14-year-old was going to die. I stayed back. I didn't want to see in that. I seen the shooter and the other gal that was wounded. Law enforcement went up to the Durango and arrested the suspect, 32-year-old Carl Alden. They found the 14-year-old girl in the back seat shot in the head. She was awake and breathing, but incoherent. Deputies say Alden had also attempted to rape her. It is sad to see the way that he has become from everything that's gone on in his life in the last six years. Irene Tenney used to work with Alden. She says she was shocked to hear what he's accused of. Whatever he got into just turned him into whatever was going on, changed him to a monster pretty much. In a later interview, one of the victims in French's grader detailed what happened to law enforcement, saying at some point Alden used methamphetamine. The defendant had a revolver of some kind and while driving turned around and shot both both victims in rapid succession. As for French, he's just happy he was in the right place at the right time. I was just helping people out and it's what we do. That's why we're out there. The way they were dressed, it's hard to know that they would have lived through it trying to find help. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. During the 5.30 newscast, we mentioned the beautiful sunset, and you noticed it too. Denise, thanks for that great shot right out the back door. Managed to catch that one. Greg shot this one in northern Wyoming. You see uh, Hart Mountain there down around the Powell area. Great colors here from Ryan as well. That was in the Bozeman area. A little more with the yellows, but 
How about this one from Rick, who knows the scenes around Red Lodge very well with some of the brilliant colors there this evening. Chris, also uh, around the Malt area, thanks for sharing. Always some great pictures, appreciate it. Beautiful colors as well from uh, Haley, right around the Joliet area. We've got more out of this. Uh, Bob uh, took a picture there. You can see the crazy mountains off in the background. Thanks for sharing at weather at KTVQ. Backyard beekeeping is getting a lot more colorful thanks to one Billings man. He's been hand painting designs on unique hive boxes. Tonight our Kelsey Marison speaks with the crafter about his Montana made products. These aren't your average beehive boxes. They're actually hand painted by a local Billings man. He crafts them in the winter to be able to sell the colorful Montana made boxes in the spring. It's a lot of work, but a lot of fun. When you imagine your golden years, this may not be what comes to mind. But for Tony Seitz, this liquid gold is a hobby that has him buzzing. When you get old, it's nice to have a good, fun hobby that everybody else could enjoy, too. Seitz got into the beekeeping business just five years ago and decided to add his own creative spin. He began creating these unique hand-painted bee boxes to sell as a hobby. This Dr. Sharshkin from Missouri was giving a seminar in Bozeman, and I thought, oh, I don't want to go all the way to Bozeman. Two full days. But I did, and I, after 15 minutes, it was the most interesting thing ever. And although he knows quite a bit about bees. In here, they'll have the queen bee will be inside. He says he still has a lot to learn. You never know enough about bees. I probably know 10% at the most of what there is to know about bees. It's complex and it's interesting. At the same time, it's a little simple. Put the bees in and collect the honey. Seitz orders the frames for his bee boxes online and assembles them before painting the outside. And this year, he's trying something new. You can open this when the hive is full and you'll see all the bees working along here. A plexiglass window so you can watch the bees working without disturbing them. And these boxes are built to sustain Montana's cold winters. It's got an inch and a half of styrofoam in all the sides and the bottom and two inches on the top because the top has to be more insulated. So it's fit for Montana weather. It's fit for Montana weather pretty much. Fit for the weather and a lot of fun to make. It's fun to make them different than just a box. In Billings, Kelsey Marison. MTN News. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, veterans pensions, a main discussion among lawmakers as they aim to make the state more attractive to those who serve. And in sports, a scoring pirate, this Broadview Levina star is breaking records, including one set by a name that we all know right here at Q2. Keep it here, we'll be back.